Okay, here's an example, a new example. We want to find the fully factored form of, and there's the polynomial right there, x to the third plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12, given a 0 at negative 3. And that means that just pretend like somebody else has already graphed it or done something else to find that you have a 0 at negative 3. So that means if you were to graph it, one of your x-intercepts is at negative 3. So we're going to do this without graphing. Okay, so that means I could make a factor out of this 0. So that's going to be an x plus 3. There's one of my factors. And you should realize that you're also going to have some other two factors in here, right? Because it's a third degree polynomial, you are going to have three x-intercepts total. Well, here's one of them at negative 3, and here's another one at some unknown, and another one at some unknown. And then if we multiplied it all back together, obviously we would get the original polynomial because if I factored it, well, I end up with factors. If I multiply factors together, I end up with the polynomial. So that's where I can say that this fully factored form, of which has two unknown factors, equals the polynomial. Well, could I not take this whole left side and divide by this factor? And if I do that to the left side, of course I have to do that to the right side. And then wouldn't this factor cancel with that factor? And then if I do this division, would I have left the part of the polynomial that would give me these two factors? Absolutely. Let's do that division. So x plus 3, I set that equal to 0, and I get negative 3. So there's my negative 3. I'm going to use synthetic division. You could use long. Coefficient 1, 3 negative 4 and negative 12. Do the division. Drop the 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Add them up, I get 0. Negative 3 times 0 is 0. Add them up, I get negative 4. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. And I get 0 as a remainder. That's a really key piece. If you get it 0 as a remainder, that means that this is a factor or it is a 0. So you always want to make sure you get 0 as a remainder. Um, here's my resulting polynomial, x squared minus 4. So now I know somewhere within, if I multiplied these two factors together, I would get x squared minus 4. So now what I do is I take this x squared minus 4, and I solve it. I'm going to solve for the other two x's, the other two zeros. And I'm going to do that by adding 4 to each side. And this looks like it's ready to be square rooted. And when I do that, I get x equals plus or minus 2. That means I have a 0 at 2 and another 0 at negative 2. So now I can make my fully factored form. So I've got x plus 3, that was my original one, and I've got x plus 2, and I've got x minus 2. The leading coefficient, look back up here. The leading coefficient is 1, so I know that the leading coefficient here is 1. I don't even have to put the 1 there. Um, if it was something different, it actually would have come out in uh, this equation here, and we'll get an example of that later. So this is an example of how to find the fully factored form of a polynomial given a 0, and that's by using synthetic division.